you'll see there's a lot of... Uh, Good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody tonight to the College of Complexes. My name is Tim. Our speaker is here. She's on her way in, but I decided to get us started. The College of Complexes consists of the following format. We will have a brief announcements period, and our speaker will speak. Then we will have a question period where we will ask that you ask a question and not make a statement. Because after that, you will each get a chance in our, own, in our rebuttal period to speak your mind, whether it be on topic or off. All right. Tonight, we're going to have our group has refused fascism. In the name of humanity, we refuse to accept the Trump-Pence regime. Donald Trump is assembling a regime of grave danger. Millions of people in the U.S. and around the world are filled with deep anxiety, fear, and disgust. Our anguish is right and just. Our anger must now become massive resistance. Our resistance must spread rapidly to every sphere and every corner of the country. Because we refuse yeah, to accept a fascist America, millions must rise up in the resistance with a deep determination such that we create a political crisis that prevents Tump Pence fascist regime from consolidating its hold on the governments of society. In short, what they're trying to tell is the people to let's make America great again. Yeah. Okay, I'll bring it with this food. Come on, uh, let's welcome we'll be our fine until I get Let's give another hand for our speaker, please. Welcome to the college. Thank you. Thank you. I haven't been here since you moved into this fancy new digs here. Um, but thank you, Charles, for scheduling us, and thank you for coming. Um, as our host introduced me, I'm here tonight as a volunteer with Refuse Fascism. We are a grassroots movement that started on December 19th, the day that Electoral College installed uh, Donald Trump in the White House. And uh, as he said, our, our slogan, our mission is, in the name of humanity, we refuse to accept a fascist America. Driving out, we understand that driving out a fascist regime is not a small matter. It's not easy, but it's what we must do. Nuclear war, the devastation of the planet, immigrants, Muslims, women, LGBTQ people, the disabled, the sick, the elderly, black and Latino people, they are all, we are all full human beings and we're all in direct peril. We have pledged to unite, to stand up, to resist, and to act with the courage and conviction and not rest until this regime is driven from power. Because that, what is at stake in confronting this fascist regime of Donald Trump and Mike Pence is nothing less than the future of humanity and a habitable earth for all of us. Now I have the ice cream yeah, chance. Okay. Sure. We can't afford to have any illusions about what we face. We confront a regime in the most powerful country in the world that is hell-bent on consolidating fascism. It's an American fascism, manifest destiny and American exceptionalism, a fascism wrapped in the Bible taken literally and the American flag saturated with racism, misogyny, and xenophobia. Sounds good. We must shatter illusions and the self-delusion that what we face is just another in a long line of bad administration and that checks and balances of the system will prevail and rescue us. No, that would be actually turning away from the situation we must confront. The task of before us is not only strengthening our resistance, which we must, to find the ways that our different struggles can come together, 
that is critical, but beyond that, we must sound an answer to the alarm that what is at stake is even whether or not there will be the political, the legal, and the civic space for dissent and resistance. Already, in state after state and at the federal level, they are moving to raise the stakes for dissent and protest. The rights and dignity of the people have no place in the program or the deadened heart of this regime. We must transform our struggle to be something far more serious, a struggle that can alter the course of history, driving out a regime that imperils us all. There's a lot of anxiety, of fear, and trauma in the air about us today, as group after group is demonized and targeted by this regime. Piece by piece, rights are being stripped away against this group and that and that, surrounded and obscured by a dizzying blizzard of lies and buffoonery. All the while setting in motion a slippery and ever steepening slope that will lead to great horrors if it's not stopped. That's why we say, and we say it again and again, backing up our words with action, in the name of humanity, we refuse to accept a fascist America. Why? Because while fascism has many characteristics, we know all too well, racism, misogyny, xenophobia, at its core, it's a form of rule that relies on open terror and violence, trampling on what are supposed to be civil and legal rights, wielding the power of the state, and mobilizing organized groups of fanatical thugs to commit atrocities against masses of people particularly groups of people identified as enemies or undesirables or dangers to society. So the question poses itself, could it really happen here? The answer is yes, it is happening. And the responsibility calls on all of us to stop it before it chokes off the air in society. We should not be fooled. While the media focuses our attention on charges of collusion with Russia and with uh, Trump's narcissism, this regime has been steadily moving ahead with their fascist program on every front. We really don't have time to go through all of it, whether it's Betsy DeVos in the education department funneling uh, public money to private schools who are exempt from uh, standards that public schools have to meet, that discriminate openly against disabled people, for instance. What, uh, her civil rights division saying that um, they are not going to enforce those civil rights, uh, those civil, um, rights anymore. Uh, to the EPA, where we have higher and higher level scientists who are turning into whistleblowers against the gutting of the regulatory enforcement that the EPA is supposed to be doing. Um, to opening up federal lands uh, for uranium mining in the, in the Grand Canyon, that's what they have in mind, to devastating national forests. The list is just interminable. Um, and, 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 and that is getting almost no attention as we hear continuously 24-7 about Russia. And the media, even so-called progressive media like MSNBC, they talk about Trump holding campaign rallies to boost his morale. They're actually obscuring the truth, the truth that these are fascist Nuremberg-style rallies. The reality is Trump gets pumped up, whipping up a sense of entitlement and revenge with calls to take back their country, to cleanse it of multiculturalism, fueling a bigoted white resentment and promoting patriarchal political forms of Christian fascism which many have called an American Taliban. And these forces are moving, led from the very top, claiming they are the victims and their right to free speech means they can threaten and beat up any and all who stand in their way. We saw it again just a few days ago in, in uh, West Virginia. People who stood up with a banner saying, drive out the Trump-Pence regime, were beaten up, dragged out, and arrested and charged with felonies. The people who beat them up, no problem. So, identifying the nature of the problem you face is the first step to finding the solution. To treat a disease requires an accurate diagnosis. Defeating this fascist regime requires, first of all, recognizing what it is without sugarcoating or wishful thinking. 
The key to finding the way out lies in the very extreme nature of Donald Trump and Mike Pence. Mike Pence, who is one of the most reactionary political figures in modern U.S. history, in his complete devotion to bringing into being a theocratic Christian fascist government. This regime has shocked the conscience of tens of millions of people. People who never gave much thought to politics have been anguished and politically aroused as in few times before. This is what we tap into and try to give expression to, to act in ways unprecedented in recent times, to demand this regime be removed from power. Nothing less or nothing else will be sufficient to stop it. Protest and resistance against many of the attacks coming down on people must grow broader, deeper, and more determined. This resistance is righteous and necessary, but it's not going to be sufficient. It's a matter of life and death to recognize that the character of fascism is that it can absorb separate acts of resistance while continually throwing the opposition off balance by moving faster and faster with its agenda going forward. The reality is that Trump and Pence regime will repeatedly launch new, highly repressive measures, eventually clamping down on all resistance and remaking the law if they are not driven from power. You cannot wait out fascism. We must never normalize or accommodate to fascism. If we do, we will very soon find ourselves conciliating and collaborating to save our own skin or that of a few others, we may be able to help escape the maelstrom. The hour is late and we must not speak false. With the best of intentions, if we're only working within the terms that are set by this very regime, advising and helping individuals sooner and not later, we will be forced to become part of the machinery of real horrors. Now is the time for massive resistance. That is the lesson of Nazi Germany and every other fascist state. It can become too late, but it's not too late yet. This must be a time of struggle leading into a fall where more and more people begin to coalesce around the single unifying demand the Trump and Pence regime must go. Excuse me. This is a moment when scan the scandal and turmoil that the Trump-Pence regime faces is an opening through which mass action of the people could burst and make our demand resound throughout the country, in the halls of power and around the world. Right now and into the fall, we are acting, agitating, and organizing to build the capacity and the momentum working with all our creativity and determination toward the time when millions of people can be moved to fill the streets of cities and towns day after day and night after night, declaring this whole regime illegitimate, demanding and not stopping until the Trump tense regime is driven from power. If this happens, then the whole political landscape will be dramatically transformed. Every faction within the established power would be forced to respond, and all this could lead to a situation in which this fascist regime is given for power. This is unprecedented, and yet at the same time, there are models and experience to learn from. Nixon and his vice president, Spiro Agnew, were both driven from power. More recently, in South Korea, millions filled the streets night after night, at first starting just on weekends, and they eventually drove their president from power. They forced the impeachment. The Ukraine, Tahrir Square, and Egypt, people in their millions posted, protested day after day and night after night, creating a political crisis for those in power to remove their despised leaders. There were shortcomings in all of these, for sure, and there are differences. But we must never, never underestimate the power of the people when we struggle righteously in the interest of humanity. We can do this. The people are there. The anger is there. If we act creatively with determination, confronting the regime and their representatives and institutions, and always do so in ways that put the truth to the lies that they represent. Making people feel through what we do that immigrants, Muslims, women, blacks, Latinos, 
LGBTQ, people all over the world are full human beings, showing through our words and our deeds that we will not accept the cruel and brutal future of the Trump and regime, that they must go, and that the people, that we are the ones to make that happen. If we organize, if we dare to creatively confront those who are imposing terror, repression, and hardship on the people, welcoming and drawing in more people into the struggle, this can combine with the growing attacks of the regime and events in the world with the potential to move millions to act. On the other hand, if we don't organize, if we don't start acting with the demand, the Trump-Pence regime must go, the opportunity to mobilize millions to create that kind of political crisis through which the re regime could be removed, that opportunity may not happen. Is there a lot to figure out? Obviously. Was everything figured out when the freedom rides against Jim Crow began in the South? Obviously not. Was victory guaranteed? Hardly. Were their sacrifices enormous? Was it worth it? I don't think there's any question that it was. The Trump-Pence regime must go. That is a simple and righteous demand. The fight to achieve it will be hard, but it can be done. What we don't know how to do yet, we will learn as we chart our struggle. This must be a moment in history when we stand together with conviction and courage, overcoming the fear and uncertainty to resist and say no. Not just for ourselves, but in the name of humanity. The Trump-Pence regime must go. You, we, can all make it so. Thank you. Okay. Questions? All right. Do you want, if you want a moderator, if you can just point to... Uh, all right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I don't have these. No, no. Pat, but It's okay. Don't worry. Just, just, just... Start with him. Pat. Okay, yes. Uh, it's constitutionally possible and probable that uh, Trump will be out of office within the next year. There's no question about that. It's possible that Pence could, Pence could be removed. Uh, we then have in the order of succession, uh, we then have Mr. Ryan. Uh, uh, how, do we, how do we deal with that? Uh, you know, you're not, I don't think any American with an ounce of brains is going to want to completely overthrow uh, the entire order of succession because that leaves open uh, a lot of problems. But, okay, say we get rid of, uh, and I'm no fan of uh, either Pence or uh, Oliver Cromwell Jr. Uh, or, uh, but, but believe me, believe me. Uh, if you're going to fight a war, you have to have a plan. So how do you remove these two people and at the same time have a regime that reasonable people can tolerate? I assume you're referring to impeachment when you say I, I am definitely yeah. assuming that we're... Uh, I, I, think, I think that's illusory. I don't think there's any basis to think that the Republican-controlled legislature, the Congress, is going to impeach Trump unless and until there is a huge, massive mobilization in the streets. They're not going to do it. They have, they have shown, and the Democrats are not, on their own, are not going to force them. There's been pretty much nothing but co cooperation and capitulation to the fascist program. So how do you remove them? That's what I, we're saying. We're going to have to do what they've done in other countries. We have to create a political crisis of massive mobilization in the streets that makes it impossible for them to go on. And that's why we talk about a fascist regime. It's not just Trump and Pence. It's the whole program, and that has to be the demand. We saw with Nixon, first they got rid of Spiro Agnew and got somebody in there who would be tolerable. And then, and, and as, your, as people said at the time, Spiro Agnew was Nixon's insurance policy. As he, soon as he was gone, and they had someone acceptable in there, then impeachment was on the table. And that was because the country was be becoming ripped apart between the anti-war movement, the um, black liberation struggle. Uh, Don was just talking about the movie Detroit. There was the, the 
country was in a turmoil, and Nixon had failed to end the war in Vietnam. It wasn't settling down, and that was a situation that required transformation at the top. And when it became ungovernable, it was not ungovernable quite, but when it became tenuous, then ways were found to remove um, those who stood in the way, and they got a, a, a more acceptable um, administration in there. I, I, I don't think absent that massive mobilization, you are going to see impeachment anytime soon. It's not going to happen. Are you familiar with the works of Gene Sharp and his book called From Dictatorship to Democracy? and about his writings from the Albert Einstein Institute, which were somewhat of the backbone and the plan that was used in the overthrow of a lot of the Middle Eastern governments. No, I'm not. You should be. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Doc. Oh. Um, Jane, what, um, what do you think about these protesters who've been going to congressional town hall meetings and protesting against their congressmen? Do you believe that these people are I mean, do you believe these people are, with, are, are doing something that might be useful, or do you think that they're, I mean, they're not all with refused fascists, and they're from different groups, but, and some of them just come on their own, but do you think that they're wasting their time, or do you think this is something that could lead to a positive change? Oh, I think it's great, and okay. refused fascism people have been in some of those town halls, okay. especially where they have more actual representatives of this fascist regime in power, and, okay. and I, I, part of the reason I brought the signs is I think if you've been to almost any protest against different attacks coming down, whether it's the attack on, on um, ACA, so-called Obamacare, or immigrants, or whatever, refused fascism is there. Um, it's not, that's what I was trying to say in the presentation. All of that resistance is really important, and we try to promote it all, and it has to go over into a unified, determined uh, demand that they all have to go. We're not right. going to be able to defeat one one attack eat another one, I'll pay for after another because they just keep <laughs> rolling it out. In the back. Wait. I've heard you speak a lot and I respect you. I've heard you speak a lot and I respect you. I'm coming from progressive voting rights issues. What do you think he needs so that is predicting that we may pull Congress back in years? I, I can't hear you? Yes. Come forward. Come forward. Uh, uh, Progressive voter turnout, I work with that. Nate Silver is predicting we may pull the Congress back in two years because, to your point, Jane, we have such terrible things not going. So, do you think people are more afraid of the word fascism or more afraid of the word kleptocracy? Because our, our data is showing kleptocracy because I don't care who tips it, I care that we get it tipped. And I think that's very important if we can pull 50, 50 some seats out. Okay. That we have an ability to do some balancing if, in fact, we have just obstructed this for two more I'd like to remind everybody that this is a break, this is the question portion. Okay, That's the okay. question is, is corptocracy a more powerful word to the American people, many of whom are on the margins and poor, as opposed to, to this word, Jane, it's because it's important, especially if we can flip the Congress in two years. Go ahead, please. I think it's a, a fundamentally a question of what, as I said, what is the problem we're up against? It really is fascism. It's not only, and I, I didn't quite hear all of what you were saying, but it's not only greed and corruption and the cronyism that is so obvious in Washington, D.C. It's actually uh, a devastation of checks and balances. I mean, you want to talk, the time will come, I think, if they're not removed, if they're not driven out of office, when the rhetoric uh, denigrating courts will become a refusal to actually follow court rulings. I think that was a question Stephen Miller put it on the agenda when the first Muslim ban was turned down. The president is right and he will not be questioned. Uh, this is fascist rhetoric that goes with fascist action. Uh, the uh, separation of church and state, Forget it. That I mean, that has been as our, the first speaker the, with the book about uh, Bush and Cheney. That there's antecedents to these people. Mike Pence didn't come from nowhere, but has taken a leap that I think is correctly called fascism, and that does scare people, and it should, because it is scary. It isn't. It was. It's a nightmare, but that's what we're facing, and if we don't analyze it correctly, if you don't analyze the problem, you can't solve it. That's, that's where 
I, I, I know that that word is difficult, um, but we have to face it because the situation is even more so. That That's that's what we, we feel. Over here. Well, uh, tr uh, tr Trump and the Republicans won the election, but you liberal fascists, yeah. the liberal fascists, you, you're the fascists, you're attacking. Uh, uh, What's your question? Uh, my question is, why are you trying to subvert constitutional government? He won yeah. the election. You are the fascists. Didn't he? You are the fascists. Who's fascists? Okay, we'll start with the first premise. Uh, he lost the popular vote by almost three million votes. He was put now. Let her answer the question. Uh, he was put in office by the Electoral College, which is an institution set up to guarantee that vote, voting would never uh, end slavery, and instead we fought a civil war, uh, a bloody civil war. Uh, and beyond all that, frankly, no election can delegitimize people's rights. No election can take away the rights of women, of minorities, of the disabled. And that is exactly what this regime is doing. When California voted on that initiative and they voted out gay marriage, did we go, oh, well, that's it. We can't do anything. No, we said that is completely illegitimate, and people took to the streets all over the country, and they went back and they organized to overturn that vote, and they were right to do it. Right. No, they, we, that's, we use the term regime very consciously. They are the fascists. They are undermining uh, the rule of law in this country. And just because they are elected does not make them legitimate. Hitler was elected. That was no coup d'etat. That was election where they got the second highest percentage. That government was formed according to parliamentary principles. And the people of that of Germany should have gotten out in the streets and should have stopped it when they might have had a chance. That, that's the just wordplay to turn that around and say that the people well, are opposed to that. checks and balances. Uh, you can't do anything because you're all against them. Yeah. We got a question. Where do you see Jackson Mellon's is Jackson Mellon's. I'm not working in a group. Well, if you you look at the the Muslim ban, it's being actually implemented. Yes. In the main right now. The lower courts more right now. They, the Republicans prevented uh, Obama's nominee from even getting a hearing. So now we have Neil Gorsuch, who is to the right of, of Attila the Hunt, okay? Uh, and, and so, so they, they basically they put it in despite the fact that lower courts had overruled it. And before they even ruled on it, the State Department had implemented it through its um, through its, uh, what do you call it, directives to embassies around the world to prevent those people from coming in. You see it in every single cabinet post. Uh, Steve, Bannon, Steve Bannon said it himself. Every cabinet secretary is there to destroy the agency that they are in charge of guiding. And that, and that means destroying my, the laws. My, my, my apology, man. Okay? But you're not talking about check and balance. Hey, one fool at a time, Raj. Check yes. the one fool at a time, Raj. One fool at a time, Raj. Order! Time, Raj. Order! Order. Time, Raj. Order. Uh, hey, Order. Let's try to remain civil here. Order! If you be civil, we will ask you to leave. All right, they right. follow the executive branch because they're supposed to execute the laws passed by Congress. When you have an executive branch whose declared mission is to deconstruct the administrative state, which is Steve Bannon's declared mission, then you have an administration that considers itself above the law, above the law that they are supposed to execute. That is fundamental to their program right now. No, no, I'm getting my question. Jackson Bennett. Do you have a convenient? Uh, do you have a definition for fascism and a definition for regime? I well, I said I thought I was trying to explain why we use the term regime because we don't think it's legitimate for the reasons that I explained, both in how they got into office and their mission being in office. Fascism. I was trying to. Some of the passages in my presentation talked about that. It's a form of rule that relies on open terror and violence.
trampling of what are supposed to be civil and legal rights, wielding the power of the state and mobilizing organized groups of fanatical thugs to commit atrocities against masses of people. That's fascism. As opposed to some of the things that we have come to expect. I mean, look, it, this has not been a perfect world, a perfect checks and balances, perfect civil rights. We, probably everybody in here has been involved in some uh, protests, movements for social justice to right wrongs, etc. Um, but this is taking all of that to a whole another level. And I think the important part is moving, the, the time issue. It's moving to, to, um, to eliminate our right, to, our, our room, and our rights to actually dissent and protest and change. So if Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan had won, would that have been a fascist regime, or? You mean? Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan back four years yes. ago. Correct. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't have thought, I wouldn't say so. I mean, actually, that's an interesting question. I haven't thought about it. I think, honestly, uh, when Mike Pence was put on the, on the um, ticket, that to me was just okay. That sealed the deal. I mean, I think Trump was talking like a, a fascist uh, with just utter disregard for basic civil rights of, of people but, and the humanity of both sections of people. But Mike Pence has been promoting a fascist agenda. Talk to people from Indiana. OMG. Over here? That's um, true. I, I don't know where to start. Uh, I, first of all, I. I I support where you're going here, but um, you haven't really given us anything that you're going to replace it with. In my opinion, you got two weeds in the in the garden, and they're both equally awful. And I mean, just so you get rid of uh, uh, Trump and Pence doesn't mean you've got the other weeds coming up on the other side. How are you going to get rid of them? You look at the French Revolution. And I mean, there was a lot of heads that rolled before they finally came up. I mean, lots and lots of blood on the streets. Uh, I mean, just, just chop and punch. It's not going to work. We've got to have something to replace it with. We're, we're, we're not. Refuse fascism is a very uh, wide movement. Yeah, but it's on both sides. It, I, mean, if you, if you, I was, <laughs> I hope I don't insult anybody, but I was no fan of Hillary Clinton. Um, and there is a difference between some democratic institutions and fascism. I don't think we're going to have the power to determine who gets replaced. I think that we can create a situation, and our goal is to create a situation where fascism is unacceptable. And from that, well, but from there, I think we also create a situation where millions of people are awakening, are questioning, are raising the kind of questions you are raising and debating this. Where did this come from? What is it in the nature, I'll use the C word, of capitalism that brought forward a fascist regime? And does that need to be analyzed and, and organized and all the rest of it? We'll have a, a, a whole outpouring of that kind of debate. But we're not going to even have that if we don't stop these people. Right. That's the problem. We are, we, a year from now, if they continue on the role that they're on, we are not going to be having these kind of debates in public about capitalism, imperialism, and, and overthrow or whatever. That's out. It's not going to happen. The price will be too high. All right. Um, thank you. I thought that was wonderful. And I, so the, before I get to my question, the, I think the word fascism, I'm so glad you used in the word because I've been using it and it seems like nobody, they think I'm going too far. And I, I want to get a copy of your thing and, and go to your organization. Because I see the problem is that this, there really have been the same fascists that were in there in the 30s have you know, infiltrated the CIA and the, they can own the media. And the problem is, as long a as they A pleasant reminder the media, from the okay, thing I'm that we please the questions. Okay, I'm getting to When they control the media, they, um, you can't get that. So I'm just commenting uh, along with this idea of the checks and balances. Okay, I would, I'm gonna, I'll get to it. I'll, 
<laughs> Let's move on. Let's yeah, move on. If the judicial system is has been has been rigged and the media is rigged and then the election systems are rigged, then eventually that that pretty much and the executive office is written so the NSA okay. controls everything and has no laws. There are no checks and balances. Again, you what's your question, please? <laughs> Yes. Thank you. By and large, I would have to say yes. Over here. Why would the rulers of the United States remove this um, democratic mask? And it is a mask, you know, in many, in many, many senses of the word. And so, an open. I can't hear enough to make out. Why would the pro fascist elements that you believe are in the government? Remove the mask of democracy. The mask of democracy. What? It is. It's yes, mask. mask. And mask. the mask. The mask. The mask. And re mask. M A S K. Mask. Right. Oh, right. Mask. And replace it with the openly <coughs> fascistic uh, uh, fist. Right. Okay. What What's driving this? Okay. Um, I think. I, my opinion is that there are some really deep problems in this country that there are that there are no solutions to in the society that we live in. Whether that's uh, the hollowing out of the economy through globalization, um, that we have what used to be a, a middle class is just on the ropes, and there's no there's no future. Trump's not bringing back. Of jobs that support a family, and we all know that. Uh, and nobody has a solution. The Democrats didn't have a solution either. Uh, we have a, a country that is changing demographically, that is not going back to being majority white. Um, we have a country that is changing so by nationality, by religion. Uh, we are the face of this country is changing, and I think there is a, a the role of women has changed dramatically in my lifetime. Um, there, are, there are very powerful forces in this country that are opposed to all of that, that want this to be, make America great again means make America white again, make it male dominated again, uh, and, and you know the rest of us can get back to the back of the bus. That's the, that's the program, and that's what they're setting in out to do. And, that, and the Democrats have had no answer to that, no fundamental answer to that. Well, What's your question? It's fairly obvious that um, what Trump did to James Comey was obstruct justice and that, you know, he told him to go easy on the guy and he did it in private. But um, why do you think um, it takes so long to take any action against him? Isn't there an impeachable offense to obstruct justice? I rest my case. There's the answer. Exactly. I and mean, honestly, some of, a few of us in the room here were out protesting when Comey was fired. Exactly for that reason, because it was another. It was a, a probably the most blatant direct action by the Trump Pence regime to say that they were above the law, that he could fire the person investigating him. And when you can do that, that is uh, you know checks and balances out the window. That is a fascist move. Unfortunately, there were very few of us out in the streets. I think too many people didn't realize the import of that. Too many people thought, oh, somebody up there is going to take care of it. Oh, he's going to be gone in a matter of months. I've been hearing that since January 20th, okay? And their power is only consolidated more and more. And that's what is so urgent and so um, uh, vital, that we're critical that we act to stop. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Who hasn't had a question yet? Anybody? Charlie, go again. Go oh again, honey. Jay, uh, is it one of the goals of your organization to recruit as many young people as possible, giving them signs and have them march up and down the street causing trouble? Causing trouble. I wish there were more young people causing that kind of trouble. Yes. I confess. I plead guilty. <laughs> 
So the, the Democratic Party is unanimous against Trump, pretty much. I've, I'm just starting to hear this now. There's something called Never Trump. These are Republicans. What can you say about it? Uh, I think they're pretty quiet. Uh, so far, the, um, the any, God, I, I can't think of a word, any pushback uh, against Trump from the Republican Party has, well, for one thing, it's met by extreme um, threats by Trump. I mean, that's another example when uh, Lisa Murkowski from Alaska had the nerve to vote against, uh, which was her perfect right to vote against the repeal and replace um, death care bill. She was threatened from not only from Trump, but the uh, the energy department told her that they were going to revoke uh, the um, funds that were going into Alaska. That is buggery, okay? And there have been very, very few who've been willing to publicly stand up to that that kind of uh, threats and attacks. Uh, and that, to me, that's another reason both why we can't rely on Congress or elections to stop them, and another example of why they have to be stopped. Pronto, fast. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Jay, um, you went through a litany of a bunch of things that the Trump and Pence regime is very dangerous uh, towards our civil liberties and, uh, and the future of our country. About. Um, I don't think you've mentioned too much about the um, Iran situation, that they're uh, trying to uh, uh, screw up that agreement that Obama negotiated, and uh, the North Korea situation, where they've been uh, jingoistic uh, on occasion. Exactly. Um, I, I didn't even get to that, and that's so critical. And that's part of why we say refuse fascism. Trump and Pence are actually more dangerous than Hitler, because they have nukes. They have nuclear weapons. And they have threatened to use them. They have been bullying. Uh, and they're playing very dangerous games. That's the problem. When you start this, this kind of bullying and maneuvering with these kinds of military power, it can get out of their control very easily and, and without, uh, without warning. That's absolutely right. Does the um, leadership of the Democratic Party need a change, or does the great Democratic Party need to go away and be replaced by a new party? You know, in Refuse Fascism, speaking for Refuse Fascism, we don't have positions on any of that. We uh, have a rule, we're not going to refight the battles of the past, we're not going to argue with Bernie versus Hillary or whoever, um, because our focus is on getting rid of Trump. How that shakes out with the Democratic Party, um, that's, we'll, we'll see. I think it'll have to change if people really, millions of people are really mobilized and see that for what it is. It, it, it's going to affect the Democratic Party along with all kinds of institutions. Did you have a question back here? Okay, okay. A comment back on that comment. Are you aware that? Uh, the DCCC has a new democratic. The DCCC has a new democratic university. To her point, as far as triple, the democratic congressional committee has a, new, has a new democratic. To her point, has the democratic congressional committee has a new democratic university. The democratic congressional committee has a new democratic university. And to your point, I do think there are stellar differences between the parties, especially on voter rights. So I think you're right. I think the Democratic Party from within is still our best hope. I don't know, I don't know I, either. I, I would say changing the Democratic Party from within, yes. that we cannot wait for that process to happen. That process may be going on and it may not. I'm not in any position to comment on that, but I think that uh, Thinking that we are going to get rid of them in the elections of 2018 is extremely dangerous and um, delusional, frankly. I, I, one word, Chris Kolbach from Kansas, okay? He's the head, new head of the election, what is it called, voter, uh, voter Fraud Commission, and he is a master of voter suppression. Right. 
And he is in there right now working to suppress the vote around the country. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. I your point. 2018 is too late. Okay. I've got one more. Alan, try one again. Ask a question. Okay. Did you give me the card on the election integrity conference coming up in Warrenville? I thought it was you or someone. I got it here. But I don't know if anybody's heard of this, but there's uh, Mark Crispin Miller. Is has I just his books are great and yeah. okay. he talks. You have two pages. He is an expert. That I, we've got a, the the elections were fraud. Okay. Right. And 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 the next one is going to be even more uh, lacking in meaning than the last one. Um, I will invite. People who are in agreement with the basic mission of refused fascism are invited, encouraged, urged to come to the Midwest Regional Conference, which is two weeks from today. It's going to be here in Chicago. People are coming from Iowa and Michigan and Ohio. Um, I hope probably from Wisconsin. Uh, you're all invited to come to bring in your energy ideas about how we're going to actually mobilize to stop them in the months ahead. Why do the Democrats make 90% of the new, of the immigrants non-white? Is it for the vote? Yeah. <laughs> I don't the Democrats, the Democrats making immigrants. Obama administration, that they changed that, that made them non-white. They're Asian, they're African, they're Latino. Only 10% are, are are white Europeans. So the, so the UK, yeah, I guess we're going to immigrate to America. I, I don't think the administration determines. Order! That's a, that's a, we'll One pool at a time. The point where we might get uh, started to rebuttal, so, is there probably going to be 12, 12, 15 people who want to yeah, rebuttal. Yeah, let's start. All right. So let's, uh, let's start the rebuttal. Let's start the rebuttal. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's start our rebuttal. Let's take our speaker. Bravo. Bravo. Okay, uh, let's uh, have a show of hands. Raise your hands and keep them up so we can get a count. Two hands. One, two, three. Oh, yeah, everybody on this side, raise your hand. Yo, anybody paying attention over here, if you want to give a rebuttal, raise your hand so I can count. One, two, three, four on that side. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Charlie's back in the 11. Is that 11? Yeah. Karina, are you going to say anything? Good, rebuttal? sir. No, okay. Give it about four. four. So, yeah, we're going to try four minutes because it's going to be a dozen or more. All right. Time to get it. Okay, uh, anybody wants to come up and give the first Let's thank our speaker one more time. I'm going to go first, Ed. Right. Uh, what, uh, what, uh, what is that? Oh, give me a minute. I'm making coffee. If anybody wants to sign up, here's the... To refuse. All right. I refuse. I need a minute. I told my boss. I look at this refuse fascism organization and I'm slightly appalled at their lack of knowing about the basic writings of Gene Sharp and his uh, book called The from dictatorship to democracy. It has been used around the world, written by a gentleman in Boston, Massachusetts, who talks about the critiques of nonviolent regime change. His basic premise is this. Once you get the people in power not to concede to the present government, usually that's when political change happens. You can look at his books and several documentaries online where he was instrumental in overthrowing Milosevic, where they were instrumental in Egypt, where they were instrumental in Tunisia, where they were instrumental in other government overthrows around the world. They started off by organizing classes, doing such things as, all right, how do you protest? You don't put the thugs in the front. You put the grandmothers and the children and the flowers in the front so that police do not do anything. You keep them from nonviolence so that the police have no excuse to go in. And then, of course, there was the infamous nightly protest of the pots and pans of when they were overthrowing uh, the Milosevic government, where they were banging pans from 5.30 to 6 when the evening news went on. 
the book goes on to say of at least 156 different ways of bringing down a government peaceably and affordably. Now, you don't think they know what they're doing? There's a revolutionary training school that's out of Serbia and Montenegro right now. And if you guys are really going to get serious about getting rid of the Trump-Pence regime, you ought to be more familiar with these guys. I am very serious. Yes. It's called From Dictatorship to Democracy. It is fully downloadable for free. If you go to Iran and possession that thing in your hard drive, you're in prison for 10 years. You go to Russia with that thing in your hard drive or in a printed copy, you're in jail for 15 years. They don't like this book in the Middle East because it has caused so much turmoil and protestation. I've read it. Um, and I've read it. The problem is now is that these guys don't have a plan after they overthrow the regime. That's the problem. We in the U.S., it's easy to overthrow a government once you get the people and popular uprisings up. The harder part is to maintain civil authority with the new government and with a new democratic regime. Usually it's okay, oh, we overthrow the guys to thing, the new guys get into power, 20, 30 years later, they get overthrown by somebody else. The biggest way to do it is the rule of law and using the present rules in the system. We don't want to overthrow the U.S. government. What we do want to do is if you're that serious about it, there are certain tools in our election kits, such as the courts, such as the Congress, in two years, we could virtually have a revolution in Washington, D.C. I personally think if we vote in libertarians, we'll be much, much better off. Thank you. Oh, Needs more steak, need more energy. I think we have to have oh, a definition <laughs> of go. fascism. You're wrong, Sid. And, um, this guy says the same thing every week. We know that Mussolini gave the, gave the definition of fascism as the corporations and the banks coming together and taking over the power of the state, the army, police, courts, jails, and so forth. So they had the power of coercion to take over the state. And if you look at Germany, what we find the people that back Hitler were the Thyssen's, the Krupp's, and the bankers, the Deutsche Bank, and there was a whole bunch of them. So fascism comes out of monopoly capitalism that wants to take over the state and make people into slaves and soldiers in order to fight the, the imperialist wars for these corporations and banks. And they make tremendous profit over taking over the state and running it in their behalf. And they, they'll use any method, murder, assassination, kicking, killing people in the streets if they're demonstrating against war or against the country. And by doing that, you make almost all workers into slaves. They're actually slaves to begin with to a certain degree under capital. For instance, you go to work, you're actually working two hours for yourself, or maybe even an hour, with the technology that we have now, and the rest goes over to the capitalists or, to, or into the financial, financial entities, like the banks and, and lending institutions and things of that nature. So in order to get fascism, we have to get at the root a fascism David. is. David. And in the United States, it's been here already. we have the Koch brothers, the Rockefellers, and uh, the people that control the internet and other means of, uh, 
of control. They're the ones that always sponsor it. And that's what's happened in the United States right now. The United States is in a crisis, in a crisis period, because they had the 1% people demonstrating against the 1% in, um, in the financial district in Wall Street in New York. And then what happened, it spread throughout major cities in the United States. So what they want to make sure of, that these people that are demonstrating and have everything to lose, do not take over the reins of the state. And right now, we're in about six different wars, seven different wars in the Middle East for the oil. And under fascism, you have a war economy, complete war economy, where these people are able to make maximum profits. And this is exactly what they're doing. But the people that run the country want to make sure that the people themselves don't take over the reins of government and the reins of the state. And fascism means tremendous profits for the banks and the corporations. So in order to do away with fascism, we have to do away with the things that generate fascism and the system that generates fascism, which is capitalism. Hi, I'm Ellen Corley, maybe my seventh time here, and um, I had to get here tonight um, when I saw Refuse Fascism. I'm so grateful for this topic. I don't see uh, the speaker, but um, well, there you are. Thank you. I think I met you a few weeks ago um, at the, the Irish place, um, the Irish, yeah. and. Um, when I during this election, the last few years, I've been researching fascism because my stepfather uh, basically is part of them. You know, I saw he he was getting demented and Trump and the Manhattan Institute and which all of which are CIA funded. You know, came and kind of it's like a cult pulled them in. Uh, I've read books. One I think is very good. Uh, by David Livingstone, uh, who you know describes black soldiers, white uh, black soldiers, white uh, white soldiers, black terror. But um, and he talks about the neocons and the neoliberals. We, it has been embedded in our our culture, uh, really going back. The influence I see over and over is Carl Schmidt was Hitler's jurist. His philosopher lawyer sent Leo Strauss to the University of Chicago and there he it started the Federalist Society and these the you know with this whole Paul Wolfowitz all the neocons the neoliberals ever since the Cold War this has been they you know got academia they you know invented these neoliberal neocon terms uh, and it really is neo-fascism uh, neo-federalism they push the state rights agenda, uh, so, you know, it makes it so, you know, everything in the Supreme Court, send it back to the state, right? And the Constitution really should have said, if it doesn't, didn't go to the state, you've got to bring it back to the federal. That's how you got the civil rights laws put in, by crossing over the state lines. But right now, it, I've got trying to sue because a Trumpian stole my stepfather, my mother's, Twenty million dollar estate, and uh, you know where do you do? You got to go to Westchester County. You got to go there. The the prosecutors now get to choose which terms they want, which cases. Is this material to the defense? No. So you've got people wrongfully imprisoned. Uh, you know the, the you've got a corrupt legal system where here in Chicago there's 130 tortured. Uh, people still that were tortured into confessing still in jail you know after 40 years 
How do you get them off? We're, I'm working with the National Alliance Against Racist Political Repression. We're going to be there when the policeman that shot Laquan McDonald 16 times, nothing would have happened to him, all the lies and everything, unless he was, uh, they, the video showed up, right? You know, I, I think finding these things, getting them in the headlines with the scandals, that helped with the Watergate. Um, you know, that'll mobilize us, right? But we're going to be there Friday uh, and in the courthouse. Please come down. Look at CPAC. We're pushing for this community or civilian police accountability council because there is never in this country has a, has a white pol has a policeman gone face murder charges for killing a black man. And they've killed a lot of them. You know, the Ku Klux Klan is alive and well. And it, I, I'm so glad we're using that F word because we're too afraid to use it. I use it, my boyfriend says, oh, that was back in the 30s. It's like, no, it's now. So, okay. thank you. Great talk. back is coming on October 21st. Oh, good. Raj Patel. Some of this democratic activities drive me crazy. You know, I don't know. They come from extreme views. I don't know where they come from. But in checks and balances, I think Supreme Courts have worked very well to block Trump when they thought he was wrong. Congress has worked very well to stop Obamacare replacement. And the court has, uh, and all the nominees of Trump were, were uh, very, 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 very well discussed. So I don't have no problem there. Okay. Now Trump, Trump is a despicable character. I supported Hillary Clinton very strongly, but she didn't win. That's a reality, and Trump won. And I do not. I think Trump, Trump is a bad guy. He's a bad manners. He's a, he's a loud mouth. But I don't think his accomplishment is so bad. Economy, economy is growing well. Stock market is up. Average income is up. Okay. Well, what, what, what do you want? I mean, he destroyed the labor laws. The labor laws. Hey, one, one person. I'm in charge. Otherwise, I get more time. Okay. S and P is to nine percent up. Nasdaq is fifteen percent up. There is a regul regulatory relief that, that Obama should have done. He did not do it. And this guy did it. So far, we have saved $70 billion. So projecting over four years, probably we save $400 billion. OK? And there's a lot of money to save for a, for a, for a country. OK? So, so that, that is a good thing that Trump did. Let us see, inflation, inflation from 2.5% to 1.6% now. So inflation is down, so our money goes further, okay? The, the manufacturing is at the highest <coughs> level in 33 years. Okay, so that is doing good, okay? And, and more people are employed in manufacturing. There are lots of new industries coming up. So where, where is your problem, I mean? Jobs, wages, yeah. wages income, immigration, illegal immigration is down 70%. Okay, so that you may you might might have different policy, but most Americans do not want illegal immigration. Period. What is it talking? Okay, everybody agrees on that. Most Americans want economic growth. Most Americans want their income go up. Most Americans want their government work efficiently. Look, eight years Obama had, and and in European did not spend enough money on defense, so we had to roll it out. Now they are going to spend what they agreed to person. And, and that, that is what uh, Trump did it. So Trump may be screwballed by everybody, but do you know something? You know, his cabinet, they are working way differently than Trump. Okay? The, 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 about, about North Korea, whatever Trump says, but he's a, he's a, he's a Department of State, what do you call it? Secretary of State, he says absolutely differently. China, Trump was talking one thing, but he acted like Obama. Okay? And, just the uh, same thing about other country. You know, Trump has not blown up Middle East, as you were talking about. And here, uh, Russia, I agree with Trump. 
I think I do not think whatever happened, let's go through that. Okay? If something they did wrong, let us do it. But I don't I don't I don't believe in the sanctions and all these things. Simple reason. The sooner we get along with Russia and make accommodation, mutual accommodation, the better we are. Because we spend less on a defense, we, we have better strategy internationally, we, we become more peaceful and we do a better job for ourselves. Okay, thank you. Okay. Next. Is this working? It's working. Okay. So um, I don't have a lot of a rebuttal nature to say. Uh, uh, I guess uh, my stand is uh, uh, asserted by the uh, T-shirt I decided to wear here. And it gives it away. Order. I have. Uh, Order. The speaker must be heard. I'm, I'm one of those that uh, I guess came in early because uh, I did come to one of the very early meetings that um, Refuse Fascism had set up in December. And uh, at that time I had written a poem, uh, which you, I, you guys, some of you heard me recite it back in February at this, uh, at this uh, place. And uh, uh, so I was, uh, along with my friend Don, uh, we were aware that uh, Trump uh, was a grave danger, and uh, as things have panned out, I mean, to be honest, uh, I really expected we'd be in a worse place here six months into the Trump administration. But um, nobody can predict exactly what's going to happen. Uh, the fact is, is that reduced fascism uh, back in December seemed to be a very uh, strong-minded group uh, to resist uh, what was going to be coming, and we could all uh, see the dangers that a fascist leaning uh, demagogue like Trump and uh, in somebody like Pence that he picked to be his vice president being uh, from a, a different standpoint also leaning towards fascist uh, uh, denying civil liberties, uh, demonizing groups, uh, going after uh, people like, and as Trump has just recently said, oh, why not just beat up uh, people that are arrested uh, or put in a panty wagon for any reason at all? Uh, kind of thing um, that, uh, that, we're, uh, that we're struggling against. So it requires uh, people maybe not to be um, uh, worried that much about exactly what actions to take. Obviously, protests in the street are necessary. And uh, obviously, they should be growing in strength. And uh, Refuse Fascism is a group that is strong in its dedication. Uh, Jay is one of the prominent people in, in this Chicago chapter. Is a uh, person, as you can see, a very articulate, uh, very up on the issues, very strong in her resistance and her willingness to work with other groups not be so dogmatic about exactly what uh, the uh, sequence of events is going to have to be for us to uh, remove this regime, if at all possible. And um, people have had concerns about, well, how could that happen constitutionally? Um, the Constitution does not say anything about reversing an election, even though we could probably prove if there was proper uh, discovery of what happened in Wisconsin, Michigan, Florida, uh, not so much Pennsylvania, but uh, with the voter suppression, if you add all their votes and what uh, the people who were suppressed were likely to vote if their votes had been counted, we could probably uh, make a good case that the election was totally illegitimate and a fraud and should be set aside if there was a Supreme Court that would be willing to do that. And I think uh, um, if there was large demonstrations in the street uh, calling for such a thing, which might happen if uh, you uh, found uh, uh, Trump uh, trying to do something to uh, negate his uh, low popularity by starting a war or something of that nature, which uh, we've discussed and uh, which we all have to be vigilant against. And uh, regardless of what organization that we uh, uh, get with, we have to resist and be vigilant against what these people are going to do. Uh, whether there's a remedy, what is the remedy? I mean, yes, everyone is worried about that. Can we wait until the 2018 election? Hopefully we can, but let's not assume that we can. 
Let's do everything we can, uh, as strong as we can, to resist these people that if they had their way, they would impose some kind of a fascist regime. So get with it. Uh, sign up if you can with Jay. Uh, she's brought a sign-in sheet. Uh, you can get on the uh, refused fascism mailing list, email list, uh, and you can be alerted to, especially if there's anything of an emergency, but you can be alerted. Uh, you can come to the regional conference on August the 19th and be part of building a strong, stronger group to resist these fascists. Come August 18th to the regional conference. Uh, Trinity Church uh, down at uh, 125 uh, East uh, 26th Street. You don't hear much about it now, but there is something called Never Trump. You don't hear much about it, and I noticed, I've just discovered it, and all of a sudden I see Trump comes back bombarding, oh, these people are no good. So he's yelling like hell. Do any of you listen to C-SPAN in the morning? Yeah. Okay, I don't know. I, this happened a couple days ago. Someone is talking and someone's yelling. Ah, oh, someone's yelling. What I get is these are Trump echoes. Trump talks and tweets. Some say yes, he needs to say more. Not realizing this adds to the noise and mistrust so no one can hear and see anything. So my question is, who do you trust? Do you trust the person with the loudest uh, voice and the angriest voice? Who do you trust? That's what it's going to come down to. All right. All right. I'm uh, I'm wearing my Alaska T-shirt today in honor of the Alaska. I think one of our greatest states in the country, and the home of Lisa Murkowski, who uh, who just who, who just voted to uh, keep my health care. So um, now uh, I uh, have uh, been a little bit involved with refused fascism, nowhere near as much as 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 Doug, who who spoke before me. Uh, but I'm I'm going to try and get more involved uh, now. I've just had a lot of other stuff going on. Um, I, uh, a lady earlier was talking about Nate Silver, and, 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 and she quoted Nate Silver as predicting that the Democrats would recover Congress in 2018. But I want to ask, why does anybody still take Nate Silver seriously? I mean, why would anybody believe a prediction about an election that Nate Silver made? Because Nate Silver predicted Hillary Clinton would win. Uh, now, now, I just want to... Now, the, the problem with Nate Silver is that he does not take voter suppression into account when he when he makes his predictions based on based on the on the polls this is the voter suppression is the reason uh, and especially the way in which the votes are counted is the reason for the discrepancy between the polls and the actual returns because the discrepancy always favors the republicans and you don't you don't need you don't need mysterious hacking to account for it the voter suppression and the and uh, is is sufficient to, to explain the discrepancy. Now, I, I thought what Raj had to say was very interesting um, in his rebuttal speech. First of all, Raj thinks that Donald Trump isn't so bad. Well, I would say that those who think Donald Trump is not so bad have not been victims of his oppression. Um, but not yet, anyway. Um, Raj says he's against illegal immigration. Well, it turns out now that Donald Trump is actually against legal immigration, too. They want to change the laws and restrict immigration, legal immigration, even more than it already is. I would also wager that if, that if Trump and his legion of followers had their way... Now, I know that Raj is an immigrant from India. It's not a personal attack. I am actually all in favor... I, I am all in favor of, immigrant, of, of immigration, uh, unlike many Americans. But I think that we're a nation of immigrants. We came, you know, practically. There aren't, there aren't any Native Americans here here in the room that I can see. So practically everybody, everybody, 
everybody, okay, but but I'm guessing you're not 100 percent, sir. Yeah, and 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 everybody, uh, right? Everybody came here from somewhere. Everybody either came here from somewhere else or their ancestors did. So basically, what you're saying when you oppose immigration is you're saying I already got mine. So you know, so to hell with y'all, with with y'all, because 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 you know I'm I'm pulling the ladder up after me. Yeah, okay. So if if but if Trump and his followers had their way, a person like Raj wouldn't be allowed to immigrate to the United States now. I mean, I think Raj has got his citizenship work. I think he's I think he's okay. He, 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 but basically, if you if you're if you're not worried about Trump, it's because you're not worried of being a victim of his policies. You're not worried about being gay and being denied the right to marry. You're not worried about being a woman of childbearing years and being told that you have to that you have to deliver a baby against your will, even if even if it's an ectopic pregnancy. You're not worried. You're not worried about being black and being killed by the police who don't have to worry because they can get away with it, even if you didn't do nothing. You're not worried about being Mexican, being deported back to the back to, to Mexico or, or wherever. You're not or being put in a concentration camp. You're not worried about um, you're not worried about about being Muslim and having your mosque blown up by 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 some by some Nazis, okay? And uh, all right. Let's elevate this clip, Rep. Butler. Let's get this elevated. Okay. Listen up. Oh, okay. One of the things that disturbs me about this group is they know clearly who they want to get rid of, but they don't seem to know very clearly what they want to do after they get rid of someone that I think we all would like to see removed from office. I'd, I'd like to see how they plan to do this because there are ways of removing people from office uh, that are already on the books. I would not favor uh, mob rule because we have seen what that has uh, led to in the past, both in this country and in other countries. I would like to know who then would be picked to be our leaders to say, oh, we'll worry about that later, uh, is, it sounds like a bunch of drunken frat boys. I'd like, to, I'd like to know who they have in mind to replace the slate that we would all like to see, or most of us would like to see, uh, <coughs> leave office. Who are these people? What's their experience? What's their background? Who's going to handle during this 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 time of uh, big change? Who is going to handle such basic things as police, fire, sanitation, all these kinds of things that a government is responsible for doing? I'd like to know if uh, this has been thought of. I'd like to know who is going to run the prison system and how that is going to be managed and who is going to determine who goes in as guests of the prison system. I'd like to know who is going to be running the courts and uh, how these judges are going to be appointed. Will we follow the current system or uh, do they have something else in mind? Just to say, oh, we'll worry about that later, scares me. Too many other countries have said that and we've had nothing but mob rule. You know, uh, France had to go through several revolutions before they finally got a semblance of order in that country. Do we really want to have a bunch of amateurs? I mean, look, we've seen what happens in the uh, west wing of the White House where you have a bunch of drunken frat boys getting into arguments and doing, you know, no useful business. Uh, we have an individual who has become the laughing stock of the world. I'm talking about uh, uh, Trump. And uh, this is our president. He picks fights with some of our closest allies. He picks fights with people we are going to need as friends. 
because the day is going to come when, you know, this business of America alone, you know, that sounds great as a slogan, but we need our allies. We need our friends. Soon we're probably going to be in, a situ in several situations which require our having to roll up our sleeves and which would require our having to do those kinds of things with some friends with us. And we're losing friends real fast. We can't afford that. I don't care how mighty we are. I don't care how ripe we are. Uh, there are certain things that you can only do uh, with allies, with friends. Uh, North Korea, for example, uh, people poo-poo that. I think when you have a psychopath playing with nuclear weapons and threatening his neighbors, who are our allies, some of them, I think you have a problem that needs to be dealt with. How is that going to be handled by the new regime? I think we have problems in our cities, particularly Chicago, uh, where you have a higher casualty rate on the west side of Chicago than you have uh, an allied casualty rate uh, in the Middle East these days. Who is going to do something about that? Do we have trained, do you have trained people that are prepared to take over this and see that the situation is handled in a very professional manner? Uh, look, amateur night is great if you're Ted Mack, you know, running the amateur hour. The, we can't afford to have amateur night when it comes to something like this. I want to know who's going to be running the show here and to say that, well, the people will run it. Uh, that's what they said just before the terror started in uh, France. Thank you very much. People started leaving and now I'm missing checks and... Are you ready to go in here? No. 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 Yeah. I'm other people and besides we... Pat and myself even remember Ted Mack in the original amateur. <laughs> 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 First of all, Raj made some comments about, gee, how well the economy is performing. Well, yeah, the German economy did very well under Hitler. And I don't see, frankly, see much difference. Finally, it's interesting that the one real Trump person in the room as usual, Hold on. as usual, always ran, oh, ran out before the, uh, uh, just as the rebuttals were getting started. He's fond of asking, as he did tonight, well, why can't you people admit that you lost the election? Well, eight years ago, when uh, Barack Obama took office, he came to Washington even e eager and, to, and willing to negotiate with the Republicans. And the Republicans said, well, we're going to make him a one-term president. Right. <laughs> and they gave him absolutely nothing during the eight years that he was in office. No, that's not. And why no, is it now that we that he, they okay, think that we're going to think yours. about it and admit that we lost the election? Would they think about it when they lost? No, and neither should we. And we shouldn't give them any more than they gave us during the eight years. What they should get from us Democrats and other assorted liberals is zero, zip, not a nothing. That's what they gave. That's what they gave us. And finally, I will say that, you know, I've been watching um, Donald Trump and his, and his pitiful efforts to contain Kim Jong-un, whatever the hell his name is, in North Korea. And I can't help wondering what a real president like John Kennedy or Dwight Eisenhower would have done with that. Or Harry Truman. Thank you. All right. Truman, Haydock, bravo. All right, let's thank our speaker again for a nice presentation and giving uh, us the, the flyers and, and stuff and um, for what you're doing uh, to save this nation from disaster. Um, I, I, I don't understand this. First, I listen to Raj, who has to be the only person in the United States that doesn't perceive that we're in 
and a disaster situation. I'm getting, I'm getting screwed up. Uh, he actually no. seems no, to think I somehow just, can't get the that out. things are operating smoothly, which I, I, I sometimes don't understand. Do you, do you feel like, like stay inside or what a lot? You never leave or your room? You haven't caught any news in the past six months. This has to be, I, I like to read, I have to read history, I like to read history the, the presidency like you, uh, unquestionably, and I don't have to be a political science pundit, but at least just on the basis of the first six months, this has to be the most disastrous administration in the history of the United States. Even when we didn't have a nation or any structure whatsoever, they were able to do better. <laughs> it, it ran smoothly right after 1776. They actually, it was much, it was not, and this is like 200 some years, and they can't, I just come in here. Now you, you're wondering, oh my, my, oh my, what do we do? Well, first of all, you got to get rid of these clouds. You got to get rid of them. And you're worried about the consequences. Well, let me tell you, pal, where have you been? There's political pointies. I actually was assigned several times to the transition teams when Obama came in. I was on leave with Athens, so I didn't have much to do. There's about 2,000 political pointies around the United States, and the rest of them are hardcore, seasoned, civilian, uh, full-time federal <coughs> employees. Guess what? We know how to operate agencies. We know how to maintain day-to-day -day operations. So we have to figure it. I wrote things for the Tribune that were printed, how we have to service these political appointees on occasion. They, they, they're very helpful. At other times, they're a little problematic. But nevertheless, there's the core personnel. We call it the old school. When you come in, and it's not this nonsense that's going on in Washington. That's an embarrassment. That's an insult to the federal civil service system. That's not how it works. Believe you me, we're informal here. That's the antithesis. It's softened up over the past couple of years, but it's a very formal environment, very structured. The antithesis of this nonsense that you have this Sar Scaramouche and that dizzy blonde and who knows what else. You worried about the transition, this is no problem, man. Anything, this is a situation where all of the above are better. None of the above. You've got to cleanse this. You've got to get rid of this root and branch. You've got to see to it, most importantly, what I'm concerned about is how we never let this happen again. Right. That's what we got to focus on. This government isn't going to go under. This is not some little place where we, the first time we decided to try to have government. This is smooth operation at the federal, state, and local level. Come on. What do you think it is? We don't we don't have any established structure. What do you do this? You know, like like federal employees, what are going to quit in mass or something? You know, I mean. Come on, it, it, it's all set up, ready to go. As a matter of fact, we don't need what that clown is doing up here. It's a disaster. And I, I got to support these folks because we got to put an end to it now. Thank you very much. You destroyed this country. You were all, oh, what are we going to do? No. <laughs> what are we going to do if we leave this guy your office? This is not amateur night, okay? Oh, come on. Who is in there now? There's nobody in the living. Hello. As you can see from the comments tonight, uh, in a group like this, some people are very well informed on one issue, and they're living in a bubble that can only be described as fantasy land on other issues. And there's so much to read and study, but it's hard to keep up. And so I'm an avid reader. I have been for four years. But I'll make a, a, a plea again. Most of the questions that everybody had here tonight can be answered by a good read of this one single book, <coughs> Bush and Cheney, oh, How They Ruined America and the World. It describes 
the right wing from Neil Gorsuch and the judges on forward from the 80s. Uh, the Federalist Society, uh, one person said, if we can pack the courts, if we can control the courts with politicians masquerading as judges, then it doesn't matter what the progressive movement or the Democrats or anybody else that's concerned about the environment or curtailing the billion dollar uh, the billionaire predators destroying the environment. If you can control the courts, you have control of the country, basically. That's their goal. Is And uh, if you're not aware of it, Trump has appointed like six times more judges at this point in his presidency than Obama did in his. And Neil Gorsuch, incidentally, is the son of Ann Gorsuch. Ann Gor Burford. Uh, Gorsuch. Uh, she was, I think, the head of the EPA in 1983 she was under, Reagan. And under Reagan until she was forced out in total disgrace. Her job was to help the polluters get around uh, laws that were on the books. That's how she saw her job. A couple comments I'd like to make. There's a theme running through a lot of what people say. They're still calling Donald Trump the president. He's not the president. He is a corporate criminal carnival barker masquerading as our president. And he wasn't elected by the American people. Donald Trump was not elected. He lost. He lost by millions of votes to Hillary. He lost the electoral vote and then they used the electronic voting machines to change the vote totals in three states after we went to bed and they came out and announced him the winner. <clears throat> it's another stolen election. And all I haven't heard anybody mention Greg Palast here. Greg Palast has a DVD out called The Best Democracy Money Can Buy. It's about the use of electronic machines for one purpose and one purpose only is to steal elections and shift the toll toward the red side after we go to bed. Tom Hartman talks about this all the time. He says, no Republican has gotten control of the White House since Eisenhower without treason or crimes against the country. Every Republican that's gotten control, every one of them, uh, has been involved, you know, from Nixon, and then you had Ronald Reagan, George W. Bush Sr., and George W. Jr., and now Trump. Uh, every one of these people has been in, uh, involved in massive crimes against our voting system to get control of the White House. Number two, Obama was a placeholder between two corporate criminal regimes. We had eight years of unparalleled crime with Bush and Cheney. Who were, we had no president and vice president for eight years. We had two corporate criminals illegally squatting in those offices, play acting the role of those offices. Now we have no president. We have a, a carnival barker, a buffoon. That's all insulting kinds of the things. carnival barkers. Yeah, it's, yeah and that, that's, it's giving a bad name to carnival barkers. You know, and Trump, Trump is the perfect person to put in there. Trump is the perfect one to put in there to create a, a freak show that the media is focusing on while the country is being converted to total fascism. Yeah. Yeah. And, it's all spelled out in this book, chapter and verse. If you don't have time to read 50 books on this subject, order this one on Amazon or from a bookstore right now. It's online. Thank you. I got 30 seconds. Uh, anybody got, else didn't have a, a time for a rebuttal? I just want 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, Give me one second, honey. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm missing her. It's it boils down. Yeah. To me, it boils down like this. I'm missing hers. Yes. I'd rather the Cubs won the World Series last year. We have a Game of Thrones in Washington. The choice of the matter is, would I rather see a second World Series victory with the present Game of Thrones going on in Washington? That's a tough one. That's a real tough one. I think I'd rather see the Game of Thrones and the Cubs with a second World Series victory. Go Cubs! Uh, that's ridiculous. Can we talk true electoral politics? I, I'm going to talk a minute on true electoral politics. I, I love the right. Rodney, but I want to talk true electoral politics. Get out of here. You can take the last one after she decides. You want to get the mic? She has some skills. Come back here. That's okay. She has. I always like reality. She has. 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 She has
people. And uh, if you plan to win, I'll appreciate it. But I mean, this just bad mouthing. That's not my style. Okay. Second thing. Okay. I'm a Democrat, and I will be Democrat. Okay. It doesn't mean I don't want to look at the truth. I don't want to look at the facts. And if you think you can win by not looking at the facts or hiding or saying that even though when things are good, to say it, they are bad. You're not going to win like that. Okay, I'm sorry. And, and and you do not like me, don't attack me. I mean, you know, just find a better idea and say, hey, look, we are going to do this and we are going to win. Okay, give me better idea, give me better candidate. Because you got 70 year old candidates and you want to win. You got all 70 year old candidates and they, they don't perform and you want to win. No, don't blame me. That's not my problem. Okay, and do you know something? I read newspaper and Mr. Pedak knows that. That every single, every single All right, Raj. All right, Raj. Four minutes. Well, I'm a political worker, so I'm to that point. I believe we have 32 districts that we're going to be able to be working with. We came very close in Georgia, Georgia 6. We did reasonably well in South Carolina. We're doing well in the far west. We know by all our voter outreach efforts that progressive Dems are coming forward. Now, I'm not saying it's perfect because I don't live in that world, but I think turning over, turning silver in 2018 is actually reasonable. And as far as Nate Silver, yes, he was only 2 to 5% off of Hillary. That's called a silent Trump effect. But yeah, I'm hoping that we can do both. Work with big picture people, but stay in the field. We have to stay in the field. We have to stay focused on voter rights, women's rights, human rights. And that is currently the Democratic Party. Oh, my goodness. I didn't need to get your mic. I feel so bad that I tried to. No, it's okay. Well, right. Just stick it on the really. Can I, can I, can I, can I say something? It's still working. Yeah, here, 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, follow up on what she just said. Uh, everybody's talking about Nate Silver predicting that Hillary would win. Yeah. Well, Nate was correct. Hillary did win it, and then they changed the vote totals after we went to bed. Yeah. That's the reality of it in Greg yeah. Dallas. Okay, Andy, get over. the. Thank you. Can you break that? All right. Um, all right. There's Put the mic uh, back. What's this? You all right, let me see if it, I guess this thing is still working. Um, yeah, Nate, Nate Silver. Me yeah, Nate, Nate Silver basic uh, predicted that Hillary Clinton would win. Remember, it's not the popular vote that decides the election; it's the electoral college. I mean, uh, I think you can make an argument that we should get rid of the electoral college, but for now, we're stuck with it, uh, whether you like it or not. And 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 any realistic prediction of a presidential election needs to be based on on the fact of the electoral college. Now. Uh, uh, now, in the case of um, Raj was talking about how great the economy is doing under Trump, as if Trump caused this. Trump hasn't done anything to cause the economy to improve. I mean, you show me what Trump did to cause the economy. No, he hasn't. Done, and also, this line of reasoning, this line of this line of reasoning, did anybody is call like, this? Yeah, yeah, this okay. this line of reasoning is like uh, is like if I sneeze and a volcano erupts, that somehow I caused the volcano. Okay. All right. Speaker gets the last word. I, I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Uh, Don and Doug and Charles uh, rebutted, uh, answered a lot of the objections. I don't need to repeat what they said. Um, I think there's a, just a huge danger of waiting until 2018. That's why we have to be out in the streets now. Um, we are facing um, one assault after another on the rights of the people who, you go to uh, Back of the Yards, you go to Pilsen, uh, the, uh, the streets are empty where they used to be. Shops are closing because people are afraid to go out in their own neighborhoods. Uh, in many cities, Cinco de Mayo was canceled this year already. Uh, people are leaving because of the terror of ICE in these neighborhoods. Uh, Don and Doug ran down what's happening to uh, trans and <coughs> transgender people, LGBTQ. Um, we are, they are gearing up a reign of terror. We cannot, we cannot abandon this struggle now. We all have to be out there. And uh, Charles put it well, we have to get rid of these fascists. Th that has to be our unified, mission and I, I, I could only urge people refuse fascism.org go to our website there's videos we've had teach-ins we've had uh, 
very uh, academics, people involved in the environmental movement, from every corner, people involved in organizing day labor, talking about what this regime means right now, let alone where that's headed. The devastation between now and 2018 is too much. We should, none of us should accept that. Uh, whether we are directly facing it or not, it's all on us. People talk about the German people, why didn't they stand up? They could see what Hitler, well, here we are, almost more than 75 years later, we know where that goes. Now, if, if shame on them for not standing up and stopping Hitler and how many millions of lives could have been saved, well, shame on us if we don't learn those lessons. So, uh -huh. refusefascism.org. If you want to stay in touch, please sign up. We have buttons, we have t-shirts, we have stickers. Join this movement. Thank you. Gavel us out, Andy. Gavel us out. Thank our speaker again. Give our speaker again. Thank you very much, and uh, we're adjourned. So we'll see you next week. Okay.